Well, tech stocks have been getting clobbered, leaving many on Wall Street to wonder if leading names like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google parent Alphabet have fallen out of favor. Here with me now to discuss what's going on with the tech sector and the so-called FANG trade is Kevin Quigg. He's the chief strategist at Exponential ETFs. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. All right, so Kevin, you think the FANG trade is dead. And while we definitely have seen weakness from those names lately, especially today on top of uh, yesterday's weak action, that's a pretty bold statement. So what's your reasoning behind uh, saying that the FANG trade is dead now? It is because I think for a long period of time, in this case, several years, I don't know that, that the individual companies are dead, but I think the collective behavior where all the companies themselves are going to behave in a similar manner, that's a thing of the past. So the way I envision it is, if you think back to the late 90s, the tech bubble, that was spread out across hundreds of companies. You have a similar bubble, but it's existing within five companies. And it's really all of those companies, while the irrational exuberance in the market led them to, to run up, each of them are facing unique challenges and each of them are going to have a unique path in the future. So collectively putting them together and assuming you're going to get 20 plus percent returns per annum is, is not sustainable over the long term. All right. Well, can the tech sell-off be blamed entirely on these FANG names here? I mean, we're seeing broad-based weakness right now. Uh, do you think this is a broader issue here beyond the weakness that we're seeing among the FANG names? Well, I think to some extent it's slightly broader, but remember, the, the, the FANG names plus Microsoft are 28% of the S&P 500. Apple is equal to the bottom 106 companies in the S&P 500. Apple has more exposure in the S&P 500 than the utility sector. Uh, and, and, you know, those companies are, are dominating performance. Over the last several years, 30% of the S&P's performance is attributable to those five names. So I really I think what you're starting to see is, is you know, their outsized influence in the markets is starting to play out. So, no, honestly, I think it is concentrated amongst those five companies. Well, then how should investors address their portfolios then uh, with keeping this in mind? Because clearly if they're wanting to invest in the S&P 500, there's a clear tech slant there. There certainly is. Again, 28% of your, of your S&P 500 exposure is technology. I think, A, you need to tread lightly like with any other investment. And B, like I said, the time to think of FANG as a trade or as an individual company is over. I think you need to look at the individual dynamics that are running those companies. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Amazon's been in the news with President Trump potentially chasing them down. You have Apple and, and you know, uh, having some competition in the cloud space. You have unique things going on to each of those businesses. Netflix is starting to see some competition from companies like Apple and companies like Amazon. The dynamics of each of those companies is going to change again. All of them collectively were very exciting. People got ahead of themselves and they thought to themselves, my gosh, the world is becoming so fast moving, so technologically savvy. I can represent this in this one trade. Eventually, that was going to deteriorate. We're starting to see that now. These are unique companies with unique challenges and unique futures. That's right. And it seemed like until just now, Amazon and Netflix were the two of that group that were uh, more immune to what was happening more broadly. But now we're even seeing them break below technical levels. Do you think that some of these names, looking at them individually, could still be ones to put money behind more than others? I mean, we've been seeing weakness from Facebook, uh, most notably for a while now, even before the Cambridge Analytica headlines. What are your thoughts on that? I think by definition, some of them will be. I mean, the, the residue of the tech boom in the late 90s wasn't that technology stinks and that technology companies have no value. It's that not all technology is good. And again, when you concentrate all that exuberance into five or six companies, none of them are going to go under. None of them are going to go out of business. But what you are going to see is them being impacted in different ways. And I do think, you know, Netflix is interesting. They're a strong competitor. They've been in a very difficult business for several years. Number one, they evolved beyond the, the you know, mailing business that was uh, DVDs to your house to get into a, a digital marketplace. That's a strong in, uh, company that's been able to evolve through time. Again, I think Amazon is a wonderful company. They're very diversified. They have lots of holdings. This is all speculation. You know, and, and, and what I've seen from this administration is a lot of rhetoric, right? It's a bargaining administration. It's a lot of rhetoric when you over ask it first and then you settle for what is your ideal. And that's really what probably is going to happen to Amazon. They're not going to get, you know, antitrusted out of business, although that would be devastating if they were. They're probably going to see some sort of lesser either, again, increasing the, the tax rates they pay on uh, some of the non-Amazon services and goods and things like that. But again, at the end of the day, these are good companies. It's just going to be a, a, a really a function of how well do they meet their challenges? How well do they adapt? And again, they're individual companies now, no longer a group of five. 
Sure. Well, clearly there are pitfalls to these trades with these catchy acronyms that, all you know, they're originating on Wall Street and uh, being shouted out to the investing community. But do you think that the thing lesson here could be applied to other groups that we're seeing, you know, particularly BAT out of China, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, that comes mm -hmm. to mind, you know, because it's important to look at, like you mentioned, these tech names individually, especially now more than ever with all this volatility we're seeing. Well, I'm, I'm less concerned, frankly, about those individual trades, right? So a FANG trade, again, it's been it's been the best trade on Wall Street for five years. It's been a wonderful result. The BAT trade is, is equally strong. What I become more concerned with, frankly, is when you see broad indices like the S&P 500 being driven by that trade. When you buy the S&P 500, you assume you're getting a diversified slice of the U.S. economy. Increasingly, you're getting mega cap West Coast based technology companies mm -hmm. and how well or poorly mega cap West Coast based technology companies do. So, too, does the S&P 500. That's not why people buy that index. So, again, individual trades and strategies and particularly ones coming from very smart people like the Fang trade on Wall Street have great merit. Again, eventually they all deteriorate. Of course they do because these are individual companies. But really, it's, it's more troubling when you see something this large affecting the broader marketplace. And that's really what's starting to seep in is people that weren't making the FANG trade, they were just buying the S&P 500, are really being damaged by all of a sudden the deterioration of some of the component parts of that trade. That's right. Well, it's definitely something that investors need to be keeping in mind right now in this current trading environment. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing your thoughts. My pleasure. Thank All you for right. having me. Well, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this space. And of course, we have the latest news and analysis at investors.com. So be sure to head there for the details on the tech stocks in your portfolio. Thanks for watching.